All right, man, I'm back. First thing I want to say is uh, if any Caucasian people uh, view this, man, fuck your hugs and kisses. Uh, go on ahead and dislike my video and keep it moving. I'm going to hop straight into this thing. Nevertheless, among the Tamukwa, we have a clear example of spiritual power of the sun expressing itself through the rotating vortex of the Kapemnu, which appears to be what is happening in an equally warlike context with the children of the sun at Gottschall. The Tamukwa played a version of the game called Chunky. In this game, a concave shaped disc was rolled. Excuse me was rolled while a spear was thrown at it. The point was to throw the spear to the point where the disc was stopped. The chief had a council that met every morning when they would discuss the problems of the chiefdom and smoke. I know they'd be smoking on that reefer. But let's go. To initiate the meeting, the white drink ceremony would be carried out. See diet below. Okay. The council members were among the more highly respected members of the tribe. I don't know if I'm going to be reading the rest of this, man. Some of you niggas going to have to read your sass. I'm going to do it. All right. Okay. Settlements. One of the sketches by uh, Devil Lee Devil Did Devil showing a Tamoko. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, demon Lee Demon Did Demon. Um, showing a Tamoko village. A Tamoko of the Northeast Florida, the Saturia, and the Aguadote tribes. At the time, they not the Aguadulce, man. Aguadulce is Spanish, right? Come on, man. They named these people. We don't know what their names are. At the time, the first contact with the Europeans lived in villages that typically contained about 30 houses and 200 to 300 people. The houses were small, made of upright poles and in a circular and shaped palm leaf thatching. I ain't never heard of that before. Covered the part. Thatching. Is it that no satchel? Thatching. I ain't never covered the pole frame with a hole at the top for ventilation. So basically a teepee. And smoke escape. The houses were 15 to 20 feet full, uh, you see the measurements, across and were used primarily for sleeping. A village would also have a council house, which will usually hold all the villages. Europeans describe some council houses as being large enough to hold three. Damn, 3,000 people. So, them the council houses. All right, man. All right. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, all right. If a village grew too large, some of the families would start a new village nearby so that clusters of related villages formed. Each village or small cluster of related villages had its own chief. Temporary alliances between villages for warfare were also formed. Ceremonial mounds might be in or associated with a village, but the mounds belong to clans rather than villages. All right, man, we ain't finna get on what these people ate, though. Uh, I'm just bringing got some of uh, it. Okay, they ate corn. They cultivated tobacco. Um, corn fritters. Corn was grounded into flour. And, okay, corn fritters. Um, they hunt animals. You see what they got going on. This last part I'm going to read, and I'm going to try to bring out some of the uh, copper tone images of these people, man, just so you know. Physical appearance. This right here should be enough for you niggas. But let's go. Excuse me. For you aboriginal Americans, commonly known as the Negrito. Okay, let's go. Spanish explorers were shocked at the size of the Tamuqua. Okay, the size? Let's go. Who could stand four inches or more above them, though it should be noted that Spangers of the 16th century were commonly under five feet in height. I see why white people are scared, man. They physically, uh, I'm talking about, man, if ever you see a buff cracker, like buffer than you, like real buff, I guarantee his ass lightweight because his bones dense. His bones ain't dense, man. Excuse me. Uh, his bones ain't. Uh, you get where I'm going, but uh, man, these crackers ain't nothing. I'm talking about in, in MMA, man, they need to crack a two times of nigga size just to be equal with them, but let's go. Perhaps adding their perceived height was the fact that Tamarqua men would wear their hair in a bun on top of their heads. Measurements of skeletons 
exhumed from beneath the floor of a presumed Northern Utina mission church, tentatively identified as San Mar uh, excuse me, San Demon de San Demon de Tamuqua. At the Fig Springs mission site yielded a mean height of 64 inches for nine adult males. And, okay. The condition of the bones and teeth indicated that the population of the mission had been chronically stressed. Stressed. Everyone was heavily tattooed and such tattoos were gained by deeds. Okay, that's common today, man. Nigga got to put in that work to get them tats, man. I... I, excuse me. Okay. Children would begin to get their tattoos when assuming responsibility that people of higher social class had more elaborate decorations on themselves, which were made by poking holes in the skin and rubbing ashes into the holes. Man, that's how I got my tattoo on my forearm, but I poke holes in the skin. I ain't put ashes in there. Uh, the Tamukwa had dark skin, usually brown and and, okay, we don't know if they say usually brown as in dark skin or black hair. They were clothes made from moss and clothes created from various animals. All right, man, these are sites you can check out yourself. I'm going to the Tamoqua and the Yamasi, man. I'm going to show you how they were oppressed together. I'm going to show you how they were oppressed together, man. But look at some of these titles. The Tamoqua Missions of uh, Florida and the Rebellion of 15. You see that. Uh... Yeah, man, the Yamasee was down chill. I don't know, you know what I'm saying, what my, uh, uh, all I know is I'm Israel. I, I'm going to claim indigenous because that's what I am, but I don't know the customs and the traditions. Keep it straight up. But uh, these the uh, the Indians of Native American Florida that I showed you about, man, look at these copper tone people. Why would they even show these pictures? You feel what I'm saying? I meant these statues. Why would they even put them in copper tone? But, uh... I'm going to go ahead and show you some uh, images of the Tamukwa dark skinned people in the next video.